What's happening hardscapers? Today we're talking about concrete sand. So for tighter joints, especially in the driveway, which is going to see a lot of traffic, we might opt for a concrete sand. It's finer than a quarter inch chip or than an HPB. So from the bottom up, it will move into the joint, meet that polymeric sand or whatever jointing compound we're going to use in that case. It will provide that interlock lockup that we're essentially looking for with that. And you can see we lifted a couple of pavers there after having laid them and just with walking over them, not even getting that compaction, that consolidation with a compactor, you're still getting that creep into the joints. And we would use concrete sand in what we would call a traditional base. So we would be using an A gravel or a three quarter minus stone. That's essentially a three quarter angular crushed stone down to fines. And then on top of that for our bedding material, we would be using a concrete sand for that. And this concrete sand is specifically a sand with sub-angular particles. And those sub-angular particles are essential because if there's too much fines in this material, what will happen is water will get introduced through those joints and into this bedding material and start to suspend those finer materials. And then it would block off more and more water trying to come through it. So those sub-angular materials are what add to the drainage capabilities of this concrete sand. Now, to be honest, I'm not a fan of using concrete sand. I prefer to use HPB even in a driveway setting and even if I'm using it on top of a gravel that's just my personal preference especially since most of the time I'm not dealing with tighter joints unless I'm doing a lift and relays like I'm doing on this project so I need the concrete sand especially in this case I'm only doing a part of the project which I don't recommend and it the remainder of the project actually has concrete sand screeded out for it so I'm not going to introduce a new material to the system I'm going to keep it consistent and use the concrete sand that's already there and add my own typically what I'll do is I'll remove that concrete sand that has been contaminated usually with some sort of soil and weeds mixed into it that's typically why we need to lift and relay and then I will bring in my new concrete sand to be able to screed there now concrete sand we allow for around 3 16 of an inch per every inch of bedding material of concrete sand for final compaction so when we compact our pavers they will compact a a little bit more than what HPB would in that case. So that's typically what we're aiming for with what we're using concrete sand for. Also, we'll use it for overlays because we can't typically get enough material under there for a quarter inch chip like HPB. So we have just a little bit of a gap, maybe upwards of a quarter of an inch between our two inch cap or whatever height of cap you're gonna be using. Typically what we use is a two inch natural stone cap. And then in the interior, we've got an inch and three quarters for our pavers, which leaves us that just quarter of an inch. So instead of trying to push our luck with HPB and not getting a fine bedding layer, a nice level bedding layer, because the quarter inch matches what the chip is what we'll use is concrete sand for that scenario so like I said overlays and for driveways with tighter joints I'm going to go concrete sand now HPB by ICPI standards is not necessarily to be used for these applications it is only to be used for a permeable application so that is something to be considered there yet when I do lift and relays and there's HPB underneath and the joints are wide enough you definitely see the HPB coming up through you see the imprint you see the HPB coming up through the bottom of the joint and meeting that polymeric sand and with that polymeric sand bleeding through slightly into that HPB you do get that lockup in my opinion my only problem with using concrete sand and not just my only but a major problem is that it's not workable in wet raining conditions with HPB we can screed in the rain no problem keep going if it's pouring down we're not going to keep working through that but in a light rain you will get imprints in the concrete sand bedding layer 
and it could be ruining your bedding layer and you have to go back and screed it. With HPB, you don't have the same problem. If you screed a portion and it just starts to downpour, you're gonna have to re-screed that with concrete sand as the water channels through your concrete sand, carries it, washes it out. And with HPB, you just don't get that same washout effect. So you can work with it in the rain. And with concrete sand, you can't work with it in the rain. Also, it's more susceptible to things like insects and weeds. So that's also something that you need to be considering as well as if you're doing a raised patio project and you have slight gaps in between your walls around the outside border of your raised patio, it is susceptible to wash out of any material that can fit through those small gaps. But with an open graded base with using a three quarter inch angular crushed stone as well as a HPB or quarter inch chip on the bedding layer, those are less susceptible to get through fine cracks. So I just lifted these pavers. I had to put them back in in a different order, but this shows you what concrete sand does. And we haven't even compacted this or consolidated this yet. And still you can see it working its way up from the bottom up. And that's what helps with the interlock of these pavers. And especially why concrete sand works so well with very tight joints where a quarter inch chip would not be able to work its way up necessarily. And especially with a driveway, getting that interlock can really help to the stabilization, to the interlock of these pavers to prevent them from shifting, moving, and being able to disperse that load of a vehicle over its surface. Those are just my thoughts, my opinions on using concrete sand and what I opt for in my systems when I am installing. Of course, it happens to come down to the application and what works best for you and your business. But those are my thoughts, my opinions. And if you wanna learn more about interlocking concrete pavement, we have courses available on our membership only platform. That's members.howtohardscape.com. Link will be in the description below if you wanna check that out. As well as our How to Hardscape podcast, if you wanna learn more about hardscaping and running and operating your own business, check out the How to Hardscape on your favorite podcasting platform. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave them in the comment section below. What do you use for certain applications? Do you follow kind of what I just explained here in this video? Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.